Aljamain Sterling, Aljo, the fluke master himself, is still coping over being the son of Sugar Sean O'Malley. Still refuses to give Sugar Sean O'Malley his flowers. And I mean, hey, if I was you and I got knocked out by Sean, I'd probably be salty too. I'd probably not like the guy either. I'd probably not want to give him credit either. But it's much easier to give a guy like O'Malley credit than give a guy like you credit for how you won the title, how your title reign went. I'm just saying. But Aljamain Sterling, in one of his rants about O'Malley not giving Marab the title shot, he was very dismissive of O'Malley's first title defense, saying, I'm like, yeah, you won, but you won against a guy that we were all expecting you to beat. So as a champion, it's hard for me to put a lot of stock on that because I just can't respect it as much. How can you not respect beating Marlon Chito Vera? That's what I want to know. Because, yeah, I've always said Marlon Vera isn't that good of a fighter, He's not the most skilled. Well, he does got skill. You know, at this level, you got to be skilled. But he's as tough as they come. And with that toughness, he's as dangerous as they come. And in a five-round fight against Marlon Vera, he always has a chance to make something crazy happen. He's got crazy power in his hands. Um, He's just not super fast. But he hits hard. And he kicks like a mule. Okay? His kicks are nasty. And this guy knocks people out, even if you're getting the better of him. His cardio's good, and he can always come back. The dude is like a zombie. And he has a win over O'Malley, and O'Malley was able to get that back years later and prove he's the better fighter and scratch that off his record. And there was a huge narrative going into that rematch that, oh, if this, or because it's a five round fight, it favors Cheeto and that O'Malley would win a three rounder, but a five rounder, there's a risk that he might end up losing this fight. He could get finished in the late rounds. And Sean O'Malley, he shut down Marlon Vera for five rounds, even in Vera's best rounds, which was the fourth and fifth. Even the fifth round, O'Malley got hurt by a body shot. He still was in control. When Marlon was coming on strong, he still, I don't say dominated the 4th and 5th, but he won the 4th and 5th and won 50-45 against Marlon Vera. He beat him more impressively than Corey Sanhagen beat him, okay? He beat him more impressively than anyone else has beaten him. He's beaten him more impressively than I believe you could ever beat him. I think if Aljo fought Cheeto Vera, he'd win, but he'd just like hug him to a boring decision and probably get dropped in a few moments where... O'Malley didn't get dropped by Marlon Vera. So how can you not respect that? That's that's a good win, especially beating a guy who beat you a long time ago. And not many fighters are able to win rematches against someone who beat them in the past. We've seen history repeat itself a lot. I mean, yes, some fighters, a lot of fighters get their lick back. But think about it. Brandon Moreno never got his get back against Pantoja as a champion. You know what I mean? And that loss haunted him for years, never got it back. Rose never got back the fight against Carla. Max never avenged the loss to Dustin Poirier. You know what I mean? At this level, losses are hard to avenge. So O'Malley did something huge. So how can you not give him credit? And okay, if you're going to say, well, it's not credible because he beat someone we knew he would beat. There wasn't really that much certainty on him beating a guy like Vera. But anyway, if you want to go down that road, what about you, Aljo? Your first defense outside of Peter Yan was an old, uh, old, washed up, injury prone, broken down bodied TJ Dillashaw, who was dealing with a lot of injuries. At first, I thought TJ was actually going to win that fight. But then as it got closer, I switched to Aljo because I just knew TJ wouldn't be the same coming off the knee injury. And then he got the shoulder injury. So, And you were the favorite, Aljo. And a lot of us expected you to make a name off the former champ, TJ Dillashaw. And that version of TJ that you beat on one arm, who was like 36 years old and past his prime... <laughs> Bro, that win is far less impressive than O'Malley's win over Cheeto. 
because you beat a guy with a torn up shoulder which leaves a lot of question marks, a lot of asterisks like, hmm, well, he was injured. What if he was healthy? The fight could have gone different. There's no questions, no asterisks beside O'Malley's win over Vera. Like, that win, there's no doubt because he shut him down for all five rounds, okay? His first title defense, his one defense is more impressive than anything you've done as a defending champion, more impressive than your split decision win over Peter Yan, which I thought you lost, and your split decision win over an old Henry Cejudo coming off the couch, and your TKO win over an old injured TJ Dillashaw. That's more impressive. Him knocking you the fuck out, and then him outclassing Vera, who's always competitive in his fights, always dangerous. That just speaks volume, and that's better than anything you've done. In your championship run. I'm just saying. And look. It's not that I don't respect Aljamain Sterling as a fighter. Or as a champion. I mean. At the end of the day. I kind of got to give him his flowers. Because he does have. You know. I don't want to say he's got the most defenses in Bantamweight history. Because Cruz and TJ have three defenses. But the first Bantamweights have three straight defenses. That is impressive. And he had a good win streak. But still. If you're going to disrespect Sean O'Malley's win. You got to look yourself in the, in the mirror, buddy, because your run as champ wasn't the most impressive either, you know? Like, seriously, how can we put much stock into you getting a DQ win for the title and defending it via split decision against the same guy, defending it via split decision against Cejudo, and defending it against a washed-up veteran, you know what I mean? Like, that's just ridiculous, but I get it. Aljo Salty... Because Sean O'Malley knocked him out and didn't give him his rematch. Um, but you should be thankful, though, he didn't get your rematch. Because uh, that knee that O'Malley landed on Cheeto, I think at some point in that rematch, he was going to land that knee on your face. And you're not Cheeto. You're not as tough as him. You would end up like how Marlon did you. So that you would have got a career-ending knockout if you rematched him. So you should be thankful. And good luck. In the featherweight division, I'm not doubting you, bro, but come on, bro. You're making yourself look pathetic every time you disrespect Sean O'Malley. It's just making you look salty, bro. Like, come on. Uh, but anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments.